It's time now for your weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news from the Southwest region. This is Fox Sports Outdoors Southwest. If you like bass fishing, boy, are you going to love the next half hour. Right now, I'd like to bring you aboard to a very special fishing location in these United States. Welcome in to beautiful Kentucky Lake. This entire area is very historic. You've got Kentucky Lake running parallel with Barkley Lake. In between is the place called Land Between the Lakes. It's got lots of Civil War history and National Park and much more. But in these lakes reside literally some of the best fishing our United States has to offer. And on today's show, we're going to experience that and allow you in the Nitro Z8 to go along with us. It's going to be a lot of fun and I'm gonna feed you a lot of information, tips, techniques, and tidbits if you would like to plan your own fishing trip here. While I'm out doing that, you get to go around your local region for your fishing reports from your favorite lakes, rivers, and bays with our expert team of insider reporters. We'll be joined in the boat by Crispin Powley, who is our Tennessee, Kentucky reporter for the Southeast version of our show on Fox Sports South and he also lives on the lake right here and is a recognized expert. Let's get this thing started right now. I am pumped. Right now, you go back to the FSN studios for your weekend planning. If you can avoid the holiday crowds on the lake, Independence Day looks like a good fishing opportunity. The Salooner tables are predicting some of the best fishing of the month to start in the afternoon around 445 on July 4th. Expect the sun to rise at 625 and set at 839. And we'll have a first quarter moon over the weekend, so the moon will be about halfway illuminated. We're coming right back with all the current fresh water and coastal fishing information from around the southwest. Plus, Ott Defoe joins us on the Whataburger Ask the Pro. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Costa Sunglasses. See what's out there. By Lose, setting a new standard in fishing performance. Feel the difference. By Strike King Lures, number one in fishing. And by Lowrance Electronics. Find, navigate, dominate. You got one? Yep. That's All a right. pretty good one too. Is it? Yeah. Oh, I got one too. We got doubles. We got doubles. Oh, that's a good fish. Look, I got two big ones. Oh, the, the second one jumped off. Unbelievable. I had two big ones on the same crankbait. Can you believe that? Hey, welcome back everybody. You're on Fox Sports Outdoors. And uh, we pulled out here on a ledge. I got it loose. Look, and look what we've done. Two decent fish right off the bat. Crispin Pally's with us. We introduced him earlier and uh, let these two fish go back. Unbelievable. You know, th this is uh, a big body of water. It's real windy out here, as you can tell. And you just sit out here and you fight it. I mean, these schools live offshore, and when you hit them with that big 10 XD or that football jig like I'm throwing, you get better than average quality fish. Well, let's tell you just a little bit about Kentucky Lake. It's 184 miles from dam to dam. A lot of water, 160,000 surface acres. When you combine it with Barkley next door, 220,000 surface acres. So this is a lot of water. It is, right and, and it's a little bit intimidating for people coming here, but the fish, as you've just seen, are all real congregated. When you find them, you found them. I've never done that before. I've never caught two on the same you know, bait like that. The, the thing about the 10XD is such a big bait, and those school fish are real competitive. And I think when you hook one, a lot of times there's still enough bait hanging out of that fish's mouth. Have you ever caught a fish and seen other fish swimming Absolutely. around? Absolutely. Well, I think that fish just, that, that bait rather, is big enough that it gives that uh, that second fish an opportunity to still get a hold of and something. And you've caught two eight pounders on the same. Well, I, I've caught, my big, biggest two have been an eight and a six at, on one cast. Unbelievable. We're gonna get our wits back about us here after a jolting start right there and get you to some fishing reports. Let's go to Oklahoma with Gary Dollar. Hey, it always amazes me how a body of water can be branded as best for a particular species of fish. Lake Uluga in northeastern Oklahoma is a really good example of that. It's known as a crappie lake, and it is a good crappie lake, but you know what? It also has a really good bass population. Hybrids are in there. It's got a lot of white bass, also has walleye. Haven't been on Uluga this year, so I grabbed my son who lives up in Owasso, only 20 minutes from Uluga. We went and checked it out. 
Now we started out fishing for bass. We saw the lake was up a couple of feet, went to the willows, went to the flooded buck brush. We could not catch the fish in the shallows. We had to move out off the flats. Now if we had a flat about four foot of water with a good break line there, some shad activity on top, we could catch some fish on the break line. Caught a really nice spotted bass doing that. We could also see some white bass were pushing the shad up on that flat, but couldn't catch them until they too would get on the brake line itself. Good point for you right now to keep on those brake lines, four to six foot of water on Ulaga. And of course, while there, we had to check out the crappie fishing because it's a crappie lake. We found the crappie in the brush piles. We caught good numbers of small crappie in brush piles 10 to 12 feet deep. Now we could start out catching them at the top of the brush piles, about eight feet down. Catch a few of those, you would have to go down deeper into the brush pile to continue to catch them. Great crappie baits on the Uligaw, the three inch Bobby Garland Slab Slayer, also the Mental Miner. Lights out color continues to be a really strong color for crappie in our part of the state right now. Hey, to keep up with all the fishing in our region, be sure and follow us on Twitter. Hope to see you on the water, but one thing about it, you can't catch them if you don't go. There's one, got it right, right while I was reeling it up. That's a good one. Good, not, solid keeper. Not bad. I'll tell you what, though. We're, we're catching bigger fish than that already today. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break right here for word from our sponsors. That's another Strike King 10XD fish right there. Back that one goes. And I want to mention something to you real yeah, quick. Too. Well, we're going to take a quick break right here. Oh, he no. ain't as good as I thought he was. That's another two and a half pounder right there, though. Recently, I had to have some fiberglass work done. And my good friends over at Johnson's Fiberglass over in Burleson, Texas, did a fantastic job for me. John Irwin and his crew can do any damage repair on your boat. They can do it very efficiently, on time, and for a great price. So we're gonna put all their information up on the screen here as we go to a quick break. But if you need any fiberglass work done on uh, any kind of boat, they'll take care of it right there at the number you see on your screen. Johnson's Fiberglass Repair in Burleson, Texas. Good one. Got him. All right. I'm gonna net him for you. He's that's a good fish. He thinks he's bad. He is pretty bad. All right, Crispin, way to go. Look at that dude. That's a nice one right there. That's a typical Kentucky Lake bass right there. Welcome back everybody, Fox Sports Outdoors. We're with Crispin Pally, our Southeast reporter out here rocking and roller rolling in big waves on Kentucky Lake. We're out in the wind fishing big rock ledges falling off into the Tennessee River Channel. And uh, that's what we're fishing for. Crispin, let's talk, well, let's release the bass first. Current plays right. a big part of what you do here, correct? It does. This is a, uh, this, this, this lake is impounded for hydroelectric purposes, which they, uh, they generate water through the dam to provide electricity for the Tennessee Valley region. <laughs> what that does is basically these fish are very tuned in to the current flow. When that current kicks on, the, the food chain just kind of comes to life and they start eating. So you've got to position your boat with that current as well, sure. and you've got to make your cast in a certain way. How do you position your boat? What okay. direction do you cast? Uh, Kentucky Lake runs predominantly north and south, and the current runs from south to north. And what, what, what you need to do to be most efficient, to give the best presentation, is most of the river channels obviously run parallel, you know, they run north and south. So position your boat where you're casting kind of 45 degrees into the current and bringing your bait back with the current. Because the fish, I, I just feel like that they, they have a, they, they've just learned to set up facing into the current because that's where their meals come from. And you pull your bait right back into them. Sure. Well, you did it on about a five pounder Yeah, right that, there. that was pretty good. Way to go. Yeah. All right, let's get you some more local fishing reports from your area. We're gonna rock and roll in the wind a little bit more out here on Kentucky Lake. Hi everybody and welcome to this week's Lone Star Lakes brought to you by Backlash Offshore Fishing. Now, we're at Lake Fork again because they're having the Catfish Classic Big Catfish Tournament. And by the time you see this, the Catfish Classic will be over. However, the good catfishing will just be starting. They're catching channel cats right now using range cubes and dog food as your area chum, and then prepared catfish formulas to draw the catfish to the hook. For blue cats, you'll want to go a little bit deeper, 20, 25, even 30 feet off the timbered points using cut bait or live bait. And we have several other great catfish lakes in Texas, including Livingston, where you'll want to fish between the island and the big channel. 
Texoma, where you'll want to fish around the dam, and finally, on Whitney, you'll want to fish the state park banks. Use these same baits and techniques and roughly the same depths, and that should get you some hot cat fishing this hot summer. That's Lone Star Lakes, brought to you by Backlash Offshore. Now let's check in with Mr. Bill Olson. You'll find him on the coast. Hi folks, this week's report is brought to you by Port Aransas on Mustang Island, the fishing capital of Texas, where anglers enjoy pristine bays, estuaries, 18 miles of surf, and the deep blue waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Plus the local restaurants will even cook your catch come sundown. Come fish and play Texas Island style. For more information, visit portaransas.org. Well, the long 4th of July weekend is upon us and lots more bathers and boaters will challenge anglers for space on our coastal waters. However, if you fish early and particularly late, you should miss some of the crowds. Other good bets are to fish the surf if the winds are light on your part of the coast, particularly if you can access the surf by boat. Now try from Sabine to High Island, Matagorda Peninsula and Island, St. Joe Island from north of the Port Aransas Jetties, and North Padre Island south of Packery Channel. San Luis Pass to Surfside is available by boat or from the beachfront. If the wind's blowing, try the bios of the Louisiana side of Sabine Lake. However, you will need a Louisiana license. Their annual non-resident license went on sale July 1st, or you can buy a daily license. Bios and back bays around Freeport and West Galveston Bay, back lakes of Espiritu Santo, San Antonio Bay, and St. Joe Island are other good options. On the lower coast, try the land cut around three islands south of Port Mansfield or drift southeast of Cullens, Long Bar, and Mexiquita Flats. Offshore is another option if the winds will allow or the upper coast. Anglers can fish the short rigs out of Sabine and Galveston. Bull redfish, sharks, and some kings have come from 30 feet of water out of Freeport. There is still plenty of seaweed coming in off the Gulf Coast. A variety of fish out of Port O'Connor and Port Aransas are available. Chicken dolphin, bonito, kingfish, and some ling are in the mix. This weekend, Saturday is a three tide day with two low tides and just one high. Sunday has a double tide schedule of two high and two low tides. I'm Bill Olson, and I'll see you on the coast. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Exide AGM Marine Batteries. Starts like new, stays like new longer. By Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland Lures. With our baits, a good day of fishing is in the bag. By Motor Guide, trolling motors engineered for anglers. By Nitro Performance Fishing Boats, welcome to the big leagues. By Fort Worth Nissan, Fox Sports Outdoors is powered by Fort Worth Nissan. And by Whataburger. Get your day started at Whataburger with the new Jalapeno Cheddar Biscuit. Got him. Got one? Yep. Right off the ledge, right out here off this real deep ledge. Feels like going up he comes. Oh decent, yeah, that's decent a good fish. one. You want me to net this one? Yeah. You're a good tournament netter, you know it? That's just what I know how to do. <laughs> what a All nice right. fish. There's a nice fish right there. Welcome back, everybody. Fox Sports Outdoors bringing you to beautiful Kentucky Lake. And I've got to tell you this now, this is my first time to throw this big old crankbait. I am so impressed. That is such a blast. Strike King 10XD, catching good ones like that. We're with Crispin Pally today, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and release this fish. This is a whole different deal for me, but these fish are living out here offshore, right. not necessarily in deep water, but Correct. people would come to this lake and start fishing around the shoreline. They wouldn't be fishing around where most of the good gangs of fish are, Sure, right? predominantly throughout the year, the, the, the biggest concentration of fish on Kentucky Lake is offshore, meaning they're relating to some type of structural feature, be it the main river channel like what we're fishing, uh, creek channels, uh, humps, flats with ditches cut through them. These just fish are just, I, I guess genetically predisposed throughout the generations of that this is what they do they feed offshore they they they're very current oriented which the current affects this river channel more than anywhere i would explain the lake in three different distinct regions from the um, highway 68 bridge in north is the the lower end of the lake that's the kentucky waters it's deeper the the offshore stuff's deeper clearer 
This is the midsection of the lake from about 68 to about uh, the Danville area. From Danville south is the, what we refer to as, as the, the New Johnsonville area. Very flat, uh, much shallower, still offshore stuff, but just tons of hydrilla. Hey friends, Captain Kevin Broussard here with your Fox Sports Louisiana Outdoor Report. We're talking saltwater fishing, we're talking Calpachu Lake, summertime actions heating up. I'll tell you what, we had a great trip today. Caught most of these fish on live shrimp, under a popping cork, I'll tell you what, the reds came on soft plastic with Rockport Rattler jig head. Right now we're gonna turn it over to old Cajun Phil and I'm gonna let him tell you about the feet. Thanks, Captain Kevin. I tell you what, friends, as you can see here, I caught a pretty good list of captains I've been calling and talking to all across the state, all getting the same exact report. It's fantastic. So I tell you what, no matter where you wanna go, friends, you contact old Cajun Phil. I'll put you in touch with the guys wherever you want to go. Now, if you want something a little exotic, well, Captain Tofield Bourgeois down at Lafitte, Louisiana. You got a couple of choices there. You can stay around close and fish with his guides and go redfish or speckled trout fish, or you could take his float plane. Captain Tofield will fly you down to the Chandelier Islands, and I tell you what, get out there and start doing some wade fishing. Ooh, they catch us a big old trout on top water baits as well as redfish. So remember, my number is 337 540 5530. We've been with all these guys, Captain Kevin and I, and I'd recommend each and every one of you. Give me a call, I'll put you in touch with it. You too can have a fantastic trip right here in Louisiana. Came off. I got one. We both set the hook at the same time. Yeah, I lost mine. You've got yours. What do you got? It's something good, I think. I think it is too. Hooked in the back. That's all right, we'll take them. Are we're, you kidding me? We're, we're not biased. That's still not a bad fish, he's, is it? He's not very good. I hooked a fish. Well, no, it's hooked in the, he's hooked in the you got mouth him. You and got the him back. Right. Good grief. Catch them all kind of ways. All right, well, we've had a good day today. Y'all stay have. with us. We're coming back to wrap it all up for you, give you lots more information right here from Kentucky Lake. Don't go anywhere. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day by Mercury Marine, celebrating 75 years of marine excellence. By Strin Fishing Lines, the standard of dependability. And by Tracker Boats, it's more than just a boat, it's a tracker. Welcome back everyone, it's time for the Whataburger Ask the Pro, where viewers can get insider tips from professional anglers. This week's question comes from Randy, who would like to know, how do you catch suspended bass in a reservoir with little structure and little cover? For the answer, we checked with Bassmaster Elite Angler, Ott Defoe. There's a couple ways that I really like to catch suspended bass in a lake that doesn't have a lot of cover. Two things really come to mind, either a drop shot or a swim bait. With the swim bait, I'm gonna throw it out and let it either count it down to those fish and begin a slow, steady retrieve, or let it go to the bottom, then just reel it back through them. With the drop shot, for me, that's gonna be a vertical deal. I'm gonna drop it right down, get my boat right over top of those fish, and drop it right down to them. Thanks, Ott. If you need help from one of the pros, visit our website and follow the Ask the Pro link to submit your question. Now let's see who wins a new pair of sunglasses on the Costa Catch of the Week. We're back here at the beautiful Fish Tail Lodge out of Paris, Tennessee, and let me get you all the information if you'd like to book your very own bass fishing trip here to Kentucky Lake, and it begins with your lodging here at Fish Tail. Sharon and her crew do a fantastic job, very comfortable, very convenient, and close to the lake. Everything you need is right here in the area. Book your trip at Fish Tail Lodge, and we'll put their information right up on the screen. And here's your little insider tip. Just across the parking lot, make sure you don't miss eating dinner at Mio Mayo's. Mark Berg and his crew do a great job there. It's named after the Jambalaya song that Hank Williams Jr. sings because Hank Jr. lives right down the street. So you don't want to miss a trip to Mio Mayo's for some fantastic Cajun cooking as well. If you want to book a guide trip, contact Sam Lashley. Here's his information as well, and he can get you out on these fish and teach you all about this river ledge fishing that goes on here at Kentucky Lake. Time right now for the Costa Catch of the Week. Someone wins a free pair of sunglasses. He is Joe Pena of Sugarland, Texas, showing off a 41-inch blackfin tuna he caught 60 miles off Surfside, Texas. 
And the only way that you can be eligible to win a free pair of Costa sunglasses is by entering the Costa Catch of the Week contest. Go to foxsportsoutdoors.com. On the right-hand side of the front page is the Costa Catch of the Week box. Click there, follow the instructions, send us your photo, and if you win, you'll win your very own pair of Costa sunglasses. You can see all of the Costa frame and lens styles by going back to the front page of our website and clicking on the Costa logo. You can see everything they offer right there, including the frame style that I was wearing on this week's episode called Brine. Next up on the Academy Sports and Outdoors Right Stuff feature, the gear you use here at Kentucky Lake to catch these good bass is very critical. Let me talk to you about baits first. You really can get by with only two baits here. One would be the Strike King 10XD deep diving crankbait. It will dive as deep as 20 feet. You can go down to the 6XD as well, but I have fallen in love with that 10XD, the bottom of your screen. And then at the top of your screen is a football jig or a hard head with a biffle bug. It's a Jean LaRue biffle bug. That's a beautiful color right here for Kentucky Lake. One other piece of gear that's extra critical here on Kentucky Lake is your battery performance. We ground on that trolling motor out there for two straight days against that hard current, against the wind with our brand new Xide AGM Edge batteries and they held up fantastic. Go to your local Academy Sports and Outdoors store, ask to see and to talk about the Xide AGM Edge batteries they will hold up and we rely on them 100% of the time when we're out in our nitro bass boat. My Papa Burger taught me a saying when I was just a little bitty kid that said, it's better to have and not need than to need and not have. It's a lot like the Boy Scout motto that says, be prepared. So many folks wander aimlessly through life, living day to day, paycheck to paycheck with very little thought about what's going to happen tomorrow or next week or next year. Barry's saying says, it's hard to live a dream without having one. One of the great things about living in our country, America, is that you get to choose whether you have a dream, a goal in life. And if you do choose to have that dream and have that goal, usually the rewards in America go to the folks who are willing to plan, work and prepare to achieve that dream. Hey, I hope you enjoyed our trip today with Crisp and Pally out on beautiful Kentucky Lake. What a great fishery this is. One of the hottest lakes anywhere in America. I think you would thoroughly enjoy a trip here. Don't forget to join us next week on the show. We'll be on Thursday night at 1030 with a repeat airing Saturday morning at 730. And don't forget to like us on Facebook for all the latest news and photos and video. But for even more of the very latest, we put our best stuff on Twitter. Follow us on our Twitter feed at the Twitter address you see on your screen. From Kentucky Lake in Tennessee, until next week, I'm Barry Stokes. Be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all.